go ahead and take our block out. You can see that our shuttle is following the wire just like it's supposed to. We're contacting the ram up here, which is rotating the cartridge shuttle. The next step is to install the proper V-block. We've looked in the instruction manual. We're loading the 32 auto, and we know size-wise it's between the 9mm, 223, and the 22 Hornet. It's not as small as the Hornet, so we're going to go ahead and try the number 2 V-block to see where that, where that gets us. First step is to go ahead and just set the V-block in, line the holes up, and get the cap screw started. And then we'll take a cartridge case, leaving the, the screw loose, leaving some play in there. We're going to go ahead and just set the cartridge case in front of the V-block and lower it down until it slides it into the shell plate. We're going to push on the back of the shuttle which is going to center the V-block up in the shuttle and then we're going to go ahead and tighten our cap screw down. We're going to go ahead and raise the ram, set our cartridge case in place, slide the V-block in just right. Now, if for some reason the shuttle is not sliding the cartridge case far enough into the shell plate or it's sliding it too far into the shell plate, adjust this wire, the height of the wire. If, and refer to your instructions whenever you have questions, it's not feeding far enough. If you need to push the case further into the shell holder, raise the wire. If it's pushing the cartridge case too far into the shell holder and binding up, then lower the wire. And a little bit goes a long ways with these adjustments. The case feeder motor assembly. And that sets up on the mounting bracket, just like so. We're going to route this around the back to a 110 power source, but not plug it in yet. We're not ready for that. All right, now that we've got motor assembly mounted, we're gonna go ahead and mount the bottom end of the tube assembly. And drop through this bracket. Now before we get too far, we're going to go ahead and install this small bushing into the shuttle and drop the cartridge case in. And then to properly adjust this unit, we want it approximately a sixteenth of an inch above the mouth of the cartridge case. And it looks like we're right there, so we're going to go ahead and bring that lock ring up tighten everything in place, drop our case through, get that out of the way, and now we're ready for our small feed tube. Now, when using a small feed tube, you need to use this bushing so that everything fits properly into the case feeder motor assembly. We're going to start with the plastic tube and the bottom bushing. And then we're going to go ahead and raise that up into the case <clears throat> hopper motor assembly bushing. When the ram comes up, it's contacting the rod. The rod is rotating the shuttle. The shuttle will feed the case down to the subplate. And we adjusted the caddy so it locates the cartridge case properly in the shell plate. All right, so now we're ready to go ahead and test it. Drop a cartridge case through. Shell. Okay, and you can see that we're not turning quite far enough to get the cartridge case to drop down onto the subplate. So what we're going to do, lower this adjustment, lower the lock nut, which will cause this to travel a bit further 
And there we go. For the shell plate, into the number one die station. The last piece we need to take a look at is the shell feeder plate. And we've got four different shell feeder plates depending on the cartridge case that you're feeding. We have a small pistol and large pistol, small rifle and large rifle. The way these plates work, they're designed to catch the cartridge cases in the hopper, orientate them base down, and feed them through the case feeder. Now the way that these work, on the back side there's a hub and inside that hub there's a cross slot which mates up with a pin, a cross pin, in the drive shaft of the lock and load case feeder motor assembly. You see that when the plate goes in, slips on the drive shaft, then rotate it, it locks into the cross pin, cross pin's in the cross shaft, and when you flip the unit on, you can see it rotates. And the way that works, we'll go ahead and throw some cases in, catch them when they come out, but you can see they orientate base first, feed in very reliably. We'll go ahead and shut that off, reassemble it. Put it on and reattach the tube. Now, you'll also notice that there's an auto off switch. When the tube fills up, for the purpose of this video, we're not gonna allow the tube to fill all the way. When the tube fills, that switch is depressed and that will shut the motor off until the cartridge case level drops low enough that the switch kicks the motor back on and refills the tube. We'll go ahead and just run a few through. So you can see how the case feeder works when properly set up. Smooth as glass. That's the Hornady lock and load case feeder.